Hi guys, welcome back. So this is my behind the scenes with media accreditation on an England match day, as I promised. So the match reports and all the interviews, they've been up, so do go and watch those. This is just talking through how a day might go if you were accredited media, because that's something you just wouldn't know until you've actually done it. And I must say, I had an absolutely fantastic day at Twickenham. There was one minor incident walking to the stadium. I think Will Skelton had a bit of problem crossing the road, uh, but the car came off worse and he was fine, so that's okay. Um, the staff there couldn't have been any better, went out of their way to show me the ropes. The media manager came over, taught me through everything, um, had decent chats with them. So hats off to them. That's fantastic. And nothing I'm going to show or talk about compromises stadium security. You can't obviously film inside the bowl of the stadium. But I've got plenty of good B-roll footage here just to let you know what it's like. And I'm just going to talk you through it and pop any comments below, any questions you have. Um, no, I really suggest if anyone's trying to get into media, try and get to do something like this. It's absolutely fantastic. The game itself was exciting. It was a festival atmosphere. England got absolutely pumped, but when everyone got behind the Barbarians, winning with 14 men, it was certainly an exciting day out. So on arrival, I was trying to find a good place to film the teams arrive, and the best place happened to be a balcony up the top where all the other media were. I kind of just found that by mistake. Uh, but the female steward up there was absolutely amazing, made room for me, uh, taught me through everything. And after filming the teams arrive, she actually walked me to the base room for radio and online media. It was absolutely fantastic from the commentary gantry. You get a lot of space, you get a desk, you get a big swing chair. It's, it's pretty cool, to be honest. So I really enjoyed that, making my notes on the game with the excellent stadium Wi-Fi, which is pretty good, obviously. Now, one thing I noticed when watching the game is you don't get loads of replay, so I probably would actually have the TV footage up on my laptop as well uh, next time. But, you know, I wanted to get the full experience of watching it live. And, of course, watching live, you get a, a really good feel for the whole game because you can see the whole pitch the whole time rather than just what the TV wants to show you. So the tactics, the you know, player athletic ability, if you like, you can definitely see more. But you do need those TV cameras to catch those close up things. So that's something I'll definitely do next time round. And also after the match, you actually get a really detailed breakdown to all media and all the stats of the game pretty much straight away after the match, which is pretty useful for future match reports. I didn't really use it for the Bar Bars game because it wasn't that sort of match. Now, once the final whistle goes, there's really no rest. You've got to get cracking, get down to the media briefing room. And like I said, the times of the conferences had changed and I hadn't checked. But luckily, I was on time. Um, and you've got an area at the back of the room where you can set up your camera. Then there's loads of chairs. And obviously, you've got the desk for the players and the coaches at the front. But what you probably don't know is to the side, there's loads of desks as well for people to work on their reports, on their laptops. TVs were going Certainly when the uh, coaches were talking to the people on the pitch, everyone was very interested in what they were saying, etc. So then you're waiting around for the coaches to come, the players to come. And once they come, then you've really got to get cracking. It's a mad rush. You've got to get your audio recorders up on the desk in place. Now, me being a bit of a YouTube one-man mug, I had to you know, start my camera. Um, I had to rush and get my uh, recorder on the desk and then get in position to ask questions. I think mine actually fell off its stand in front of Eddie Jones. I just had to leave it on the desk, but it was absolutely fine. Um, and that's when I was actually really nervous. And if you watch my um, interviews in the press conference, uh, hopefully it didn't come across that I was that nervous, but I really was for that bit. The one-on-one -on -one player interviews, that was absolutely great, but certainly with everyone in the room and especially with uh, you know, England having lost by a lot, there was a a bit of a tense atmosphere as well, shall we say. Eddie Jones's relationship with the media, yeah, it does seem pretty strained, to be honest. Uh, the media guys were super relaxed. They were asking very calm and reasonable questions. Um, and considering England had shipped 50 points to a 14-man scratch team, yeah, you can understand the coach being a little bit upset. But he definitely gave some sharp answers to some pretty decent questions, really. So that was interesting to see from behind the camera, if you like. Now, just a little techie note, I had to buy an audio recorder. I got the Zoom HN1 microphone, which I must say was absolutely fantastic. I used that on the desk for the media conference and also for the player interviews. That was really, really useful. Um, I definitely need to get a new camera, invest in a few more bits and pieces, but um, that's going to take a bit of money. I've got actually got a few sponsors, a uh, men's health company sponsoring a couple of videos coming up. So that's going to be useful because um, to be fair, they did actually invite me back 
to a few things. Hopefully I'll be going to uh, Penny Hill Park to interview some players at some point and get down to at least one of the Autumn International to one of the Six Nations. Hopefully I can get into one of those. So I do need to get a little bit of, bit more gear. But what I had, you know, did the job on the day, especially that Zoom uh, microphone and audio recorder. Now, after the coaches and captain's press conference, again, there's no rest, really. You have to pack up all your stuff super quick, zoom down to the mix zone, um, where the players come out to give you a little one-on-one -on -one interview. The Barbarians, I think they were busy celebrating, which I don't blame them. So a few of the England players came out. You had Marcus Smith, Danny Kerr, Jack Willis. Um, Marcus Smith was in great demand, so I didn't get to speak to him, but I did speak to Danny Kerr and Jack Willis, and they were really relaxed and fantastic with the answers so definitely uh, look forward to doing a bit more of that anyway after that i was pretty frazzled from the day a little bit buzzing to be honest so i did succumb to the world's most expensive pasty seven pound 40 but it was two for one because it was the end of the day but i didn't need two so i just turned around and gave it to a man with a beer behind me you're welcome so I thoroughly enjoyed the day out, a real experience, a real learning curve. Uh, many thanks to the Twickenham media staff who went out of the way to help me throughout the day. Now I know how it works, it should be a lot easier next time. It was a good test game, being a bit quieter. If it's a Six Nations game, I can imagine it being absolutely manic, especially in the press conference, getting all your gear ready, asking questions. That'll be interesting. So anyway, as promised, I'll let you know how it went. Uh, really enjoyed it. Any questions, do pop them below. And I hope to be doing a bit more of this stuff. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you next time.